um hi bindu uh, in this uh, conversation we'll be talking about the details of communities of practice or uh, as we refer to it as cop um thank you for uh, sharing your knowledge with us if you could start by briefly introducing yourself hi tanu thank you for this opportunity uh, i am bindu tirumale um i have been working uh, some tests with the cl for stem project um and before that uh, with clicks and um in clicks uh, i primarily worked with the communities of practice um and i would like to share my experience of uh, the clicks communities of practice and the learnings from that to be able to take it into the cl for stem program great thank you so let's start by understanding the basics um the first question is why should we use a community of practice approach for continuous professional development for teachers so if we um, look at the latest research on teacher professional development it really suggests that uh, the teachers learn best in a kind of social learning environment and the communities of practice or cops as i'll call them now are really uh, a social learning environment and what do i mean by social learning environment is mm, yeah. it gives teachers an opportunity to share their practice discuss issues around their practice um and and find solutions amongst each other and also amongst other experts who may be participating in the community of practice so. um the other thing is in the uh, like in the clicks intervention uh, we would like the uh, cl for stem intervention to be a practice based approach a practice based approach means whatever they learn in their modules uh, they try and implement that in their classroom so it's really to try and take the learning from the uh, from the modules and the workshops into their classrooms and actually try it out and only when they try it out we say that the learning uh, gets uh, becomes more sustained uh, in in the teachers practice great yeah. thank you uh, thank you for that uh, background setting so can you talk about uh, briefly uh, why is it important to have communities of practice in cl for stem yes so uh, this comes really out of the action research that uh, that i worked on in clicks and the findings from this action research on communities of practice what we found was that when teacher educators actively manage the community of practice uh, that teachers were able to share their pedagogical content knowledge which was very much uh, situated in their local classroom context mm-hmm. they were able to easily uh, seek solutions to technical problems infrastructure problems and even pedagogical issues they faced while they were trying to implement the clicks uh, intervention and modules in their class so as a result what happened um, teachers um, you know shared their practice uh, from their classrooms through photographs uh through um you know to through simple text messages it easily they shared uh on the telegram cop and that made their uh their their practice classroom practice public to the community that is to their peers and to the teacher educator so it it became a safe uh environment where they could uh, they felt safe to share right. uh, their practice yeah um the other um finally i think it 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 enabled a strong connection between the university teacher educators uh, that is in our case it was tis and uh, and the school the school teachers who were situated in rural and remote areas so that this enabled a strong connect which uh, which proved to be very good for pedagogical continuous pedagogical support so you for think- teachers so you think that kind of strong connect between the university teacher educators and field teachers would uh, could happen in these countries yes. as well yes yes okay. so uh, it it's it, it enables not just a one time workshop or a module uh, teaching but it enables continuous pedagogical support that teachers can uh, leverage from the co um, 
can you share uh, details about how the communities of practice can be operationalized? Yeah, so in what we found was in uh, clicks, we found that teachers participated more actively in mobile based apps because they are easily able to share classroom photos, uh, quickly type small text, uh, share other multimedia like little videos and uh, pictures um, of their, of classroom work, students work. Mm. So we, uh, we decided to use Telegram a mobile messaging app which is similar to WhatsApp only it has advantages because it's open source app and uh, the security is uh, much better in Telegram and uh, um, also the uh, the number of users can expand to a large number in telegram uh, so we are using telegram as the app, app for creating the cop um, are there any other details that we should know about operationalizing cop yeah so cops work best when you talk around the subject mm -hmm. uh, that you're teaching especially for secondary school teachers who are very focused on teaching their subject like physics or maths or uh, biology, whatever the subject. So uh, we would like you to create a, a subject based uh, COP in each country mm -hmm. uh, where you have uh, the teacher educators for the subject and who are the module leads for the subject participating all the uh, CL for STEM teachers who are part participating in the intervention to be part of the COP and uh, also the uh, research fellows, the local as well as the TIS research fellow for each country uh, to be part of this. So you will have four such subject-based COPs. So for example, if I say Nigeria, then you, you would call it a CL for STEM, uh, give a code for Nigeria as NG, probably and then give the subject name physics uh, or chemistry like that uh, so four such C uh, telegram COPs uh, you would have one other uh, COP which we would call the common COP where we would want all the subject teacher educators all the subject teachers and the research fellows participating in the COP uh, to uh, to to talk about the intervention as a whole and any problems, uh, any administration, any implementation related issues with the, uh, with the CL for STEM intervention as a whole uh, and also be able to discuss experiences across subjects. Mm -hmm. This would be a place to do that. Great. So five COPs in total per country. Um, the last part of this uh, talk is around how to manage a COP. Um, could you please share some strategies that you have, uh, that you know about that are used to manage COPs and some challenges also? Yeah, so I would say to manage the COP, again, I want to sort of stress on the objectives we had for the COP. We had like three main objectives that really led to uh, teachers building confidence to implement uh, active and progressing pro progressive learn pedagogies in their classrooms and also edtech and use of resources whether it's hands on or edtech resources in their classrooms what we uh, our main objective was to sort of strengthen the linkages between and the relationships between teacher educators and teachers that was one aim the second aim was to actually strengthen the uh, discussions and uh, interaction among teachers themselves, mm -hmm. whether they belong to the same school or different schools in in a in a you know in the country and the local community. And the third, very important, which, which I've mentioned before, is the practice based part. We really wanted to support teachers to implement their learnings in their classrooms and also report back and when you report back and you share and you reflect in a group it's it's always more learning than reflecting alone and uh, th there's much more to offer from other teachers from teacher educators and this really creates that social learning environment which uh, which is so important for professional development um, so 
for this we adopted uh, two actually main strategies mm -hmm. um, one was um, we created prompts as teacher educators we created prompts and we made sure we selected one day of the week i selected fridays and uh, every friday i would uh, in in this case i facilitated a math community of practice so i called it friday maths education time and every friday without fail i would prompt i would post a prompt on the cop and this prompt usually asked um, you know questions you create a repository of questions they could be puzzles they could be interesting problems to solve or um, but basically it was about uh, uh, eliciting the teachers pedagogical content knowledge how they uh, their tacit pedagogical content knowledge that they used in their classrooms to bring it out in the uh, community and uh, this worked very well many teachers responded and um, and the as as a teacher educator I, i was very prompt in responding replying back to their responses and encouraging them to connect uh these um learnings of, uh, or these replies to their practice mm. and to their students learning so i was always prompting and encouraging them to do that i have a follow up question um how did you come up with the prompts that you were using for the friday figures so i would i i did not design these completely on my own actually uh that would be a lot of work so i pick the topics like the module topics you right. have so you pick the to topics and the topic areas and you browse the internet you will find many um, um platforms that uh, you know ask interesting questions about uh, uh, or puzzles or uh, you know around science and math topics so i would take that from the internet and i would contextualize it for our teachers got it and then create these prompts got so um youtube videos are available uh, there are several platforms for science and mathematics that you can look up um, and i will give some examples in the write up great okay so the second strategy was really to uh, encourage the implementation of the uh, intervention in their classroom so really for this to um, whatever uh, ideas they implemented in their classroom whatever activities they implemented uh, in the classroom to ask we encourage the teachers to share photographs reflections and even students work yeah. if they did any uh, group work or any uh, work on their class books we right. encourage teachers to take photos and share that and discuss have discussions around these uh, you know classroom practice and students work um also the what is very important was to make the teachers feel safe to discuss and share so we never critiqued or criticized actually we never criticized any teacher for sharing uh, and anything that was not right or uh, so the environment was very safe and polite and which encouraged teachers to share freely without being afraid to share uh, you know that real feelings about things uh, and we very uh, politely facilitated any uh, uh, you know conversations uh, discussions so the teachers also felt that the the norms we set therefore um, most teachers did not uh, you know uh, discussed very politely among each other also i think through this so that was very important and it really motivated the teachers to uh, to highlight good practices learn from each other and uh, and try it out in there so if if a teacher was not trying it out and some other teacher posted all these things from their school they kind of felt motivated that i can also try out something so um i think that motivated them to uh, and we also use the as teacher educators we use the cop to nudge teachers who are not active to uh, you know complete the module uh, share their session plans and 
give them the positive feedback about their session plans and, and uh, in very gentle ways on how they can improve the session plans. Got it. So, yeah. so the COP basically uh, created a safe space, as you mentioned, for teachers to have open, honest conversations about their practice with teacher educators and with other teachers, which led other teachers to get encouraged and try out what was being suggested. One more thing I would like to add is some teachers were very shy. Yeah. Despite the safe environment, they were very shy. And they chose to send personal messages to teacher educators. But what I did as a teacher educator was I anonymized it. I did not say who sent me these personal messages, but I would post it back on the uh, COP. So this encouraged some of the very shy teachers to finally come forward in the COP. But it also um, kind of kept the COP active with participation. So you may face this also. Yeah, got it. Uh, would you like to talk a little bit about the challenges that you faced while managing the COP? Yeah, one, one challenge is uh, teachers take a while to start posting and responding. Um, so we may get frustrated if we don't... Uh, you know, there, there may, might be no responses to some Friday prompts that mm. we created. But to keep nudging and to keep continuing. Because what happened was when uh, even though some of the prompts did not receive replies, I never stopped posting. I posted every Friday. And then teachers, many teachers started expecting it. Mm. And when there was a reason for not posting on one Friday because... I was genuinely not well. I had at least five teachers respond private, ask me in private message, why is there no prompt? Yeah. So they really, then I realized that they're anticipating it eagerly. Yeah. And uh, so uh, to not stop the prompts. And when teachers reply, we should be very um, prompt in re responding to that because teachers get very discouraged if there's no activity. If they respond to something, however simple it is or, you know, however unimportant it is, for the teacher it's very important. Correct. And when they don't see a quick enough response to it, then they get discouraged very quickly. Yeah. So in, in this month of implementing the, your module, I think you should be very, um, very focused on managing the COP and very prompt in participating yourself as a teacher educator, that uh, creates that uh, motivation for teachers to participate. Got it. Yeah. And uh, the second thing is uh, to be very polite mm -hmm. in the responses. I've already mentioned that because that's very important. Teachers also get demotivated if, uh, you know, if somebody says, oh, no, this is wrong, this won't work, or... Even in the feedback, even if you know that something will not work, put it in a very gentle way to the teacher. Because they're, after all, trying to respond in a group and they're trying to make their practice public uh, in that community. So they must feel safe. Otherwise, they will not uh, reflect uh, meaningfully if, they're not, if they do not feel safe. Correct. Yes. Got it. Um, thank you. Uh, the last part is around, uh, can you share your reflections about what worked well in the click COP? Yeah. So what uh, really worked well was um, generation of uh, the practical pedagogical content knowledge. So uh, these research-based PCK uh, is something that was taught in the modules, but uh, teachers' interpretation of it in practice and how they connected it with their local context, local uh, resources and, uh, you know, and the policies and the environment of the school came out very nicely in the COP. So you got a very nice idea of how to, uh, you know, bring that, uh, um, the research-based PCKs into their local context. They were themselves able to uh, express that. That is one. The second was uh, a lot of confidence in using resources. In, in the clicks cases, it was both at tech and hands-on resources. But you could see a lot of sharing through photographs and 
uh, we could see that teachers built confidence to use resources meaningfully in their in their practice and in their classrooms. That was one thing. Um, definitely, they appreciated the uh, connect with the university faculty that that uh, built confidence for them that they had support, mm. that it was not just a one-time workshop or a module that was taught to them, that they could always come back and ask for support, which is something that happens even now after the clicks intervention has been, you know, uh, completed over two years ago now. It still goes on. So that, that connection has strongly established for further pedagogical, continuous pedagogical support. And I think um, overall, I think what it really does is helps the teacher, it kind of fosters autonomy among the teachers. Because of this confidence, they are really able to use um, their own uh, judgment and their own ideas uh, to try out these new things, new innovations in their classroom. And that, I feel, is one of the most important things uh, to develop for teachers. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Bindu. Um, would you like to add anything else? Um, I, I keep adding this, but I, I feel that the COP is only as successful as the teacher educators' uh, uh, very active management of it. Uh, if Unless the COP is managed efficiently uh, and actively by the teacher educators, uh, there's only so much it will be. To make it really a social learning environment, it's our job to really facilitate PCK, facilitate module implementation, facilitate good feedback for the teachers. And then we create that learning environment. Awesome. Thank you.